Good afternoon, everybody. We're back. One of our guests today was an Army sharp shooter for the Army ROTC. Stay tuned to find out who. He's a Florida witch with something to say. Your friendly old sage way of the teddy bear face. The Alexia Show. The magic's on its way. Merry meet everyone. I'm Alexian and joining me again as my co-host is Draken. How you doing? Hey, welcome. Can you, believe, <laughs> can you believe it's already been a month since no. our first show? No, I, I mean, it, it. time passes quickly. It, it's kind of crazy how fast it goes, isn't it? Yeah. All right. Well, hopefully we'll get some live viewers here so we can start interacting with them. So mm -hmm. what's new with you, Draken? First of all, first of all, I need to give you a belated happy birthday. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I hope it was wonderful. Uh, I saw some of the food that Victor made for you and wonderful. Uh, <laughs> so everything's been pretty good here. It's been a busy month. I've been very, feeling very crafty. I made this hat which was a challenge that you put forth on the on the community and um it kind of just catapulted me into making all kinds of cool stuff so it's been really wonderful and i plan to keep it going into the next month um well you need to bring that hat forward in in the show later and show it off more close up because it came out beautifully you did such a great job on it and I'm, I'm so I'm so happy that it, it sparked your creativity. Yeah, thank you. Thank <laughs> you know, you. so, um, and I also got to see you just yeah. like a week ago in yeah, person. So I went to Florida with my oldest daughter and her husband and the kids and uh, the other sets of grandparents. And we did the whole like Disney thing. And it, it was just, it was wonderful. But then we got to see you guys and you got to meet that part of the family. And it was really wonderful because. My kids have always called you Uncle Doug. Yeah, you know? well, <laughs> it happens. Yeah, <laughs> it so happens. It was, nice, it was nice to get to see you in person. So I see we have at least two viewers live in the audience so far. Where are you all turning, uh, tuning in from? Where are we at? Yeah, comment in the YouTube video comments. Um, I just want to remind everybody that um, it is an interactive show and there will be Q&A opportunities at the end of every guest's segment. Draken will be covering the comment section in YouTube. So don't be shy. Right. Speak up and ask your questions. Right. Did they answer? Uh, not yet. Not yet. Okay. Well, they're being a little shy. Oh, here um, we go. Here we go. <laughs> so Yay. we got a great... Yeah, we got a, oh, there we go. Sandra's in the house. Yeah. So she's in Alabama. We got a great show for you today. With us today is the pagan recording artist, Ginger Ackley. I love me some Ginger. Uh, pagan author, Beth Sage is also with us. And you nice. don't want to miss out on the Arcane Treasures giveaway at the end of the show because... When that happens, you can win a bundle of goodies that's gifted from both of our guests and our sponsors. And um, of course, I have to uh, also say, if as always, if you're interested in being a guest on our show yourself, just go over to alexianmusic.com slash guest. And there's a little form there you fill out. And that starts the whole process moving forward. So we are still looking for guests for future shows. Spread the word, right? Yes. Um, all right. So uh, here we go. I am going to go ahead and say we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and we got we don't have a lot of viewers today. I think everybody's out playing in the sunshine because it's spring. It's pretty nice out here. Yeah. Yeah, we got a lot of replay views from the last show, though. 
it's taking <laughs> off. It's starting to take off. So I know the more episodes that we do, the more viewers we will get and things will snowball. So <clears throat> I'm excited for the show. So let's go ahead and dive right in. Okay. I'll be back. It's time for Enchanted Verse. So today I'm thrilled to introduce Ginger Ackley, a name that resonates with warmth, depth, and enchantment in the pagan music community. As a talented recording artist, she has carved a unique niche for herself in the realm of pagan and Celtic folk music. She was the recipient of the Best Female Artist Award from the International Pagan Music Awards, IPMA, in 2020. Her melodious voice and gentle strumming of her auto harp invites us into a world where every song leads and tells us a story that touches the strings of our hearts. Everyone, please welcome my friend, Ginger. Hello, Alexi, and hello, everybody. How you doing, darling? Doing well, doing well. Thank you. How about you? I'm doing well. Thank you. <clears throat> um, you feeling better? Yep. Yep. Throat is definitely getting better. Still fighting a little bit of roughness, but it's getting better every day. I thought I was going to be hoarse today because uh, out of the blue, my allergies hit like a ton of bricks yesterday, and I had major drainage, and then I got a sore mm. throat. Last night, I was like, I'm a frog. You know? <laughs> but then I woke up this morning after doing my herbal therapy, feeling much better. So I'm glad we both have voices. Yes. Well, I've got my, my hibiscus tea with a lot of honey in it. So I'm <laughs> working on that. So I knew of your music before, but I really got to know you better when we did the Red Album together, right? Right. So... Um, tell us a little bit about your experience with the Red Album real quick. Uh, I, I did not get a chance <clears throat> to go to, to uh, PSG that year, but I, I, they contacted me immediately uh, when it was over. And it had just so happened that, that um, the Muse had given me this really strong healing song that, that's meant to reach back into the trauma of the past and heal it and uh, i proposed it to the group and they they loved it and um it fits so well with the progression of emotional um healing that goes on with within that album um the as as you know having been on the album the 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 emotional range goes from from anger and rage all the way to spiritual healing and going forward. And so it just it fits so well with that. Um, and it it is it's been a source of of joy and amazement. And it it's continued to chart on the on the pagan music charts ever since. I'm just I'm really glad for that. Well, your song is gorgeous. Thank and you. I had the pleasure of mixing the videos and I loved that whole scene of you sitting in the flower garden. You know, it was, it was just, it was beautiful. Yeah. Those were, those are lilacs. And, and uh, I had heard about lilacs ever since I was a little girl, but I'd never seen them because I was raised in Texas. But now uh, that I'm up here in Ohio, I get to enjoy them every spring and it's just, I'm really, I, I love lilacs. It's one of the things I miss about not living up north and living in Florida. We don't have lilacs here either. And I grew up with lilacs. In fact, my mother had the old fashioned lilac colored lilacs, but she also had white ones and red ones and they all smell so beautiful. It was always a sign of spring. You know, you would pick the blossoms and bring them in the house and it would scent up the whole oh, yes. room. Yeah. And, and we don't have that here in Florida at all, but we do have the orange blossoms. So through that. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it was a pleasure, you know, being on the red album with you, but, um, you know, moving on, can you explain to me what Enchantica is? 
Is it an album? Is it a show? Is it a music book? Is it all of the above? All of the above. That's what I thought. I, <laughs> I was confused. Honestly, in the beginning, I didn't know it was an album. I thought it was just your live show. So tell the audience all about it. All right. From, from the beginning, once upon a time out at PSG, uh, the year that um, the two rivers flooded and, and everybody had to evacuate and a, a nine-day festival turned into a two-day compressed experience. I was introduced to a group called Enchant Camp, and they kept the chant going while everybody was was getting everything back to safety. And that that idea of the chant that continually wove through all the experience really stayed and resonated with me. So fast forward to the week that the lockdown hit when the pandemic struck all of us and um i mean it's just it's my nature i i was panicking wanting to find something to help people um it just so happened that particular wednesday i was supposed to go into um, a metaphysical shop called the new moon here close to me and uh do a music workshop about chant and uh, how how music can connect you with spirit I called the, the lady that, that ran the shop and I said, well, I guess we can't do it at the shop. Nobody's allowed to go out. Uh, what do you think I should do? And she said, oh, just take it online. I had no idea how to do that. But I figured it out in, in about an hour and a half. And Enchantica has been going online every Wednesday at 7 o'clock in the evening, Eastern time, uh, over four years now. It's amazing. And uh, I've, I've, I've done it through through having a broken arm. I've done it through being kind of ill and just you know, all sorts of things have happened. I've done it in, in remote locations. And it's just, it's really become a kind of a worldwide community. Um, and the more, and I started out singing all, all of the, the pagan chants that I could find online the ones that we all know you know we all come from the goddess and born of water and you know the the all of those and uh the more i sang those the more the muse sort of entered in and i started hearing new music and new words and uh, really being schooled uh i the way it feels being schooled by the goddess in in the elements and the elementals and how we interact with them and how they connect us with spirit, how they connect us with each other. And uh, so I, just one chant after another, one song after another, after another, after another. And finally, uh, people were asking me for recordings of these. So finally, I sat down and I made the the, the first Enchantka album. Um, and then the when i was talking about it people said well we want to play along can you give us the chords so it turned into a book and turned into a song book there you go um so that's that's how all of that happened and um the muse has continued to flow and i've i've i'm working with sue balachek and and trying to put together a second enchantica album um and we'll just see where things go from from there but it's it's the word blessing is is small compared to what I actually feel uh, about this whole experience. It's just it's it's marvelous. It's like the it's like I channel the goddess. I channel the muse every time it happens. It's not me they're hearing. It's it's the goddess, and that's the way it should because that's that's what they need. We've got a worldwide audience now, and uh, it's been picked up by Fringe TV online. So it's seen every Sunday um, at 11 and 7. And um, that's Enchantica. That's amazing. You know, when it's meant to be, it's meant to be, right? Absolutely. And yeah, I, I know that um, you had told me that your your muses were screaming at you, and, and I can relate to that. <laughs> <laughs> I just, you have the time apparently to get things recorded and done. I don't yet, but I'm working on that in my life. 
but yeah, it's a, it is a blessing when, when you have all of that just coming through, right? Just coming through. So why don't you share with us some of the lyrics from Green Woman, which is from Enchantica. Yeah. Green Woman. Oh my goodness. That this is the story. Uh, there's a, there's a kind of a companion song that goes with it. And that's come the green man. Um, I guess maybe the, after the first year, uh, somebody asked me if I had a green man song and I said, no, but I bet I will. So about three days later, it, it had all come together and, uh, we were out at a park doing a crone circle and I shared the song and, and everybody that was there with us in that circle for whatever we, we all looked up into the big oak trees at the same time. And we all saw the green man appear there in the branches. So shortly after that, someone asked me during Enchantica, well, we love the green man song, but is there a green woman? And does she have a song? And I said, no, but I bet she will. And it just so happened that um, I had sort of had that rolling around in my head and, and actually had a whole page where it was just sort of stream of consciousness, just words written here and there, written here and there. And all of a sudden, somebody gave me the name of uh, an ancient Britain goddess, Ellen of the Ways. And all it seemed like all of the words decided to coalesce on the page. And all of a sudden there was the song. And uh, I, when I sing this, I, I can, it's almost like there's a movie going on in front of me and, and I can connect with her. And now when I go into the woods or when I'm in the green, I really, really feel her presence. So the, the, the lyrics, green okay. woman, Green woman stepping in the forest glen, trees bowing low as she dances in. Green woman, wild woman, strong woman, tree woman, earth woman, deer woman, real woman, true woman, Ellen of the ways. A green woman walks where the deer have been and she lights up the path to call you in. Green woman dances where the spirits play, shining in the moonlight that's bright as day. Green woman knows where your soul has been. Come into her green, let the healing in. Green woman, wild woman, strong woman, tree woman, earth woman, Dear woman, real woman, true woman, Ellen of the Ways. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. And I, I have to say, you know, when you listen to the music, it's such an incredibly peaceful, wonderful song. Um, I like I like the next one you're going to share with us today even better. And I'm going to comment on that in a minute. But before we do that, um, Yes, that that is that is an amazing song. I Thank love you. the fact that you put a feminine um, spin, if you will, on the green man. And why not? You know, it's part of Mother Earth. There is the balance, and, and there's and and you know as well as I that that. They they come together the the male and female and the and then there's something else beyond the male and female and it's just it when it happens it's just the most incredible magic unity yes the spark of life indeed so um, um, all of my guests and sponsors do um, offer up a gift for the uh, giveaway the Arcane Treasures giveaway at the end of the show. Do you want to tell the listeners what you're offering up? I've got uh, downloads for the Elf King's Horn, which is an album that is full of magic. Um, it, it's it's all about that magic point, you know, 
three three four o'clock in the morning that magic hour when it's it's not day it's not night it's and all the all the spirits come out to play it's about fairy tales coming true it's about um dancing in the moonlight with the moon lady um it's about letting your spirit sing and and just being magic um and it's i've it was one of the most incredible experiences to write the music and record the music it was amazing um and then the the other that i'm offering is a download code for the we folk stomp for for those pagan children that are out there we need we we musicians really need to keep in mind that we have young folks coming up and music is such a wonderful way of connecting them with spirit and spirituality it's not pushing a religion it's opening up their minds to possibilities and uh, so we have had absolutely incredible experiences with kids over the years sometimes i'll dress up as posy the flower pixie and that's that's specifically to to sing and dance with uh, with the kids of all ages i i don't put an age limit on kid but uh um so i i'm i put those into our grab bag yes i i got to meet posy <laughs> she's lovely she's always here really close <laughs> Um, okay, so also from Enchantica, you want to share some lyrics from Deep Peace? Deep Peace. <sighs> Deep Peace is, I, I, I don't know, I'm sure there's a word out there for it, but it, it is one of the most incredible musical journeys I've ever been on. Right, right up here, I know you can't see it real well, but somebody gifted me a beautiful calligraphy of what was called the Gaelic blessing and it's only four lines but it 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 calls it wishes it 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 sends the deep peace that exists in the natural things of the earth and in in you don't have to go through convolutions to get to the deep peace and i could always hear some kind of music connected with it but i couldn't couldn't connect um but I, I got very curious about it and i started trying to find out the story of the gaelic blessing well it turns out that um it's actually part of something else the the gaelic blessing is um it's part of a healing chant a healing spell um written it's from uh, the dominion of dreams published in 1909 william sharp um in scotland who wrote under the name of fiona mcleod sometimes um and the 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 story behind it it comes from the the chapter called the amadan which is the the fool if you think of the tarot deck and um so this man has been basically driven mad or he's he's been driven out of his mind he's he's fey and he's been wandering the land and wandering the land and wandering the land and he's given over to an old blind hermit and and the, the hermit takes him in and he works to heal the 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 parts of his body that can be healed uh because he hasn't been eating he hasn't been i mean he's, he's just he's crazy and at one point the hermit lays his hand on him and he invokes all of the deepest things of the earth in order to give this man peace and allow him to become himself again so I, I, I coalesced a, a lot. I mean, there's a lot more to the chant, but what I sing is deep peace, a soft white dove to you. Deep peace, a quiet rain to you. 
deep peace, an ebbing wave to you. Deep peace of the morning dew to you. Deep peace I breathe into you. Deep peace, deep peace to you. Deep peace, pure red of the flame to you. Deep peace, pure green of the grass to you. Deep peace, pure brown of the earth to you. Mm. Deep peace, pure blue of the sky to you. Deep peace, I breathe into you. Deep peace, deep peace to you. Deep peace of the running wave to you. And deep peace of the flowing air to you. Deep peace of the quiet night to you. Deep peace of the sleeping stones to you. Deep peace I breathe into you. Deep peace, deep peace to you. Deep peace of the shining sun to you. Deep peace of the glowing moon to you. Deep peace of the shining stars to you. Deep peace of the Mother Earth to you. Deep peace I breathe into you. Deep peace, deep peace to you. And what I always tell people when I sing that song is, Take those last two lines. Deep peace I breathe into you. That is a deep earth magic. Breathe peace into one another. And it works. So mote it be. So mote it be. What a beautiful, beautiful blessing. Listen, when I listen to deep peace, I'm sometimes moved to tears. I love that song. And not only that, but I honestly mean this when I say this, I can hear and see that song on like a movie soundtrack. It's so well recorded and produced. It's beautifully done. I must ask how many flutes are you playing on that song? Um, I think two. I think, I think, two. I, I think I just did the two it's and beautiful. and did harmony. Yeah. So she not, you know, Ginger not only plays the auto harp and sings, but she also plays the flutes and she's very, very good at it. Oh, they're, they're penny whistles. I can't do the side blow. My mouth is totally wrong for those, but I love, <laughs> I love the, the Celtic penny whistles. There, you do such a great job at it though. They're in beautiful harmony with each other, you know? Thank you. And, and I just love it. I love that song. I love that song a lot. I love Green Woman too. Don't get me wrong. I love Green Woman, but like Deep Peace, I like even better. Thank you so much. I feel it. You know, I feel the energy coming through your voice in that song. It's so important to, to know that you can find the deep peace, that you can find the deep magic in the, the most mundane appearing things on earth. Mm -hmm. And that once you key into that, then you are surrounded by this incredibly powerful magic all the time. And it's healing. I have, I have been in situations, uh, there was a, I was at a, a rental car thing. Somebody had bumped me and I had to get a rental car. And um, there was a woman that was just having a meltdown. And under my breath, I started singing deep peace and breathing deep peace towards her. And you could see all of a sudden it was just, it went down and everything, it works. Breathe peace into each other. It I breathe peace into the news when, when it's terrible. Um, and it, the, the grocery stores and the crying babies and, you know, it just, and whenever you do that, whenever you breathe deep peace, 
you're always getting a return of deep peace yourself. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I didn't know that when I wrote the, when I started writing that, but I, I was definitely schooled. So what are you working on now? Oh, well, right now, um, I have lots of new music, <laughs> but uh, at some point in this month, um, I have a new children's book that is going to come out. It is called Stardust. And that is a that is another uh, Enchantica song. Uh, we we start Enchantica with it each week. It's a little creation story, and um, it it helps us all remember why we honor the elements the way we do because we are all stardust and the way it came out in a book is it starts with the the great mother sitting in the dark before dark and in the time before time in her hand is one tiny mote of stardust and she's a maiden and something happens and she starts calling in new words like air and fire and water and and as she does the the dust dances and grows and and shines and changes and she changes too she 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 becomes the mother and and so as she keeps pronouncing these new words and having these new experiences, finally, there is one last word that occurs to her and she's afraid to say it because she knows just, she knows how destructive, how messy, how mean that can be. But on the other hand, she also knows how deep and beautiful and loving and fantastic it can be. So finally she pronounces the word earth and life begins and she becomes the crone. We're all stardust. That's so beautiful. I can't wait to see it when you get it done. Uh, a circle of ancient sisters is publishing it, and I'm so I'm just waiting to to put the word out and start sharing the book with everybody. That's wonderful. And I, it is it is a deep privilege for me. One of my grandchildren actually did the illustrations. That's so cool. So, so I'm just I'm just when when they sent me the first picture and the little goddess had purple stars in her eyes. I knew that was that was exactly right. I was going to actually comment on the color scheme of the cobalt blue and the purple are some of my favorite colors. Yeah. Yep. A very well done on them. Very Thank well you. done. Great Thank artwork. You. Great artwork. So if you are interested in any of Ginger's music or her upcoming release of the Stardust book, you can go to gingerackley.com. Here's a little website uh, screenshot. And um, you can find all of her offerings there, all of her disco discography, discography. <laughs> and uh, yeah, she's got a lot of albums out. She's busy bee, busy, busy, busy bee. Gingerackley.com is the place to be. Awesome. Thank you so much. So let's You're bring right. on Draken and let's see if we have any questions. Did anybody pose any Q&A questions? Okay. Before we get to anything like that, I just want to say, Ginger, you are so precious. You are just a treasure. I just <laughs> thank you. Um, and, and I don't have any questions, but we have a comment, which I think we can bounce into questions. Just Sisters of the Moon is Sandra's favorite. What what is the what is the question? So my question then is maybe tell us a little bit about Sisters of the Moon. Sisters of the Moon is a very dear, dear, dear song to me. It was one of the early ones during the pandemic. And there were several people that were just like, 
oh, we, we can't get together for our moon circle. We, you know, we miss getting together. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? And Sisters of the Moon came to me. It was like, like a, a whisper song that started in the back of my head. And it made me realize that if I really believe in spirit the way I say I do, then I can reach out and I can connect with you. And I can connect with you anytime I need to. Yes. So when I'm looking up at the moon, I don't know if anybody remembers the the uh, little animated uh, Disney thing uh, with, with Fifel, the Amer an American tale. But there was a point where the little mouse looks up at the moon and his sister looks up at the moon and they know they're both looking at the same moon and they connect. That's that's the whole idea. My sisters and my brothers of the moon, when I look up at the moon, yeah, we're all connected. And and whether I'm deep in the forest, whether I'm in the city, cloistered in my room, um, anywhere I am, I'm always able to connect with you because of spirit so that's sisters of the moon i love it lovely 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 wonderful all right before we go on any further i just want to remind everybody viewing the video not to forget to smash the like button and if you're new to the channel to the channel make sure that you subscribe and ring our bell because that'll help you not miss the next monthly show. And while you're at it, be a helper and share the show with your like-minded friends to help us spread the word. The more we get the word out, the more we'll get viewers and the more it will take off and the more guests we'll get, which means more things for you to en enjoy and learn and be educated by. I would be amiss if I do not mention that we have sponsors for this show. Yay. This show would not be possible without our sponsors. We're actively looking for pagan-minded businesses and services that would be interested in sponsoring future shows. If this sounds like you, you can head over to alexianmusic.com slash sponsor, and you can have your logo right down there, just like Morgana, I can't, she's over here, MorganaMagicSpell.com is, PaganMusic.com, and AlexianMusic.com. So let's talk about our sponsors real quick. I'll bring you guys right back. Okay, sponsors time. So Morgana Magic Spell is our first sponsor. She is again out of Vancouver, Canada. She's back this week or this month. She was our sponsor last month and she is our sponsor this month too. Rowan told me that she had gone through some rough times in her life and then she found the goddess and then she found the craft in her mid forties and people started asking her to write spells for them. And she found that she had a knack for spell writing and all of a sudden she was on to a new business and 15 years later, she's on Etsy. She now has over 385 listings on Etsy and her website at MorganaMagicSpell.com, which is full of her love and her magic. She wants to share the same magic with the world that helped her find her own happiness and her true path the magic of the goddess. So this month in the Arcane Treasures giveaway is the Beltane booklet. Last month, she gave away an Ostara booklet that was pretty thick. And this time it's the Beltane uh, booklet, which is very, very cool. We're moving along with the seasons and she's changing up her offerings. So again, that's at the end of the show. Stay tuned for that. You have to be watching live to win all of these prizes. Next up is paganmusic.com. You may be familiar with the fact that this website belongs to Victor and myself. We've supported Pagan Music Online since 1993. Oi. <laughs> when we formed Earth Tone Studios. And then we took Earth Tone Studios online in 97 as paganmusic.com. 
So on paganmusic.com, 30 years later, we're liquidating our stock and um, we've held on to some titles and some objects that have actually gone out of print and are worth a lot of money. And guess what? We did not raise our prices. So you can still get these items for a really good price out of print stuff. Lots and lots of bumper stickers, if you like bumper stickers. Our goal now with paganmusic.com after liquidating the store is to turn it into an informational hub for pagan music so that we can continue supporting all the pagan music. And paganmusic.com is happy to donate a $25 cart checkout coupon for the Arcane Treasures giveaway at the end of the show. So again, stay tuned for that. And then lastly, this is just my website as, you know, owner of the show and owner of the website. I figured, you know, I put that up there too, because why not, right? So I have a lot of musical offerings and upcoming courses and trainings on my website that you may be interested in. Not to mention the Coven of Cool Cats, my online private community. We're having a lot of fun in there doing all sorts of meetups. In fact, Draken, when I bring you back on, might be a good idea to show off that hat, uh, which was one of the challenges within the uh, community. And uh, Draken made this amazing hat. And it's only $4 a month. Not going to break your bank. Four bucks a month, you can join in the fun with all of us. You got that uh, you got that hat handy? I do, I do. And I'm just, I was shocked at how well this turned out. But. I, bits and baubles that I've had in my collection for years, I finally got to use. I mean, this was so much fun. Like, mistakes were made, but you know what? You can't tell. So. It's gorgeous. I mean, it is gorgeous. You could do that as a living. <laughs> I, I was, I was so excited. Um, at first, when you had the the challenge up there, I was like, I don't know. That seems like a lot to make a hat. But uh, YouTube, love YouTube, watch a bunch of videos, conglomerated down to what I thought would, would work for me. And then I just started adding things and some more yep. things. Bits and, and bobbles. That's what hedge witches are good for. You, you collect yeah. little bits and bobbles and someday in the future, the magic goes. Yeah. And yep. it all comes together. And this material right here, I have enough of it left to make a dress. Wow. So that, that's on the list. Very cool. Yeah. So matching dress to go with the hat. Mm hmm Yeah. Shoes are next. Oh, that is a good <laughs> um, All right. Was... We'll see you in a minute. I'm going to go ahead and bring on our next guest. Perfect. Awesome. So I'm delighted to share and welcome Beth Sage to our live show today. Beth is a pagan author and has beautifully encapsulated her own insights and personal spiritual journey into her book, A Heretic's Devotional. Her work is not just a testament of her understanding of pagan beliefs, but also a reflection of her personal experiences, making her writings profoundly relatable and inspiring. And I got to play the little, I got to play the little video. I forgot it. Here it is. Time for secrets from the pagan bookshelf. Up, do up, bibbidi, do up. Everyone, please welcome Beth Sage. Hi, thank you. And thanks for the welcome and for having me on. So Beth, I have to share this with you. You, you didn't even know I'm going to say this. Um, when we were emailing each other to get ready for the show today, I did a search for your email address. And guess what popped up from way back? I'm afraid to ask. That can be scary. <laughs> it's not that scary. There was an email that popped up from Yahoo Groups from 2007 
Oh my goodness. Apparently we were in the same Yahoo group, which was, uh, you know, Wiccan related and mm -hmm. your email address was on in the, I guess it was a CC of a bunch of people, right? Remember how Yahoo right. groups used to work. Um, and I was like, oh my God, she was in the same group with me and we didn't even know each other back then in 2007. Oh my goodness. Yeah. I have, I've met a lot of friends through the Yahoo groups. That was a good time. Yeah, those that's a whole nother that's a whole nother uh, lifetime ago in the internet. Oh, tell me about it. Tell me <laughs> about it. And which box? I said something about which box. Oh you, yes. You know, I you have the there? funniest story about which fox. I'm gonna say it real quick. Um, okay. I went to Berkeley College of Music in Boston, and right around the corner was a music store called Wurlitzer Music, and I used to go there all the time to buy supplies as a, you know, a student of music. And there was this nice guy that used to like wait on me all the time. And it was about the same time I was getting into paganism and Wicca in the eighties, in the, in the late eighties. And um, he was waiting on me and, and we knew each other cause he was always the guy that waited on me. He was really cool. So fast forward, I moved to Florida, I graduate, I moved to Florida and I start networking with other pagans online and I'm networking with this guy and I'm networking with this place called Witch Fox. And I become friends with, um, uh, you know, Fritz and Ren. And uh, we talk for a couple of years. And then we're all excited because we're both going to be at Heartland Pagan Festival in Kansas. And uh, we're like, oh, we finally get to meet each other, right? So, mm -hmm. like, we, we go to Heartland and we're, like, you know, messaging each other. And, like, okay, let's go here and we'll meet in person. And when he walked up to me, I went, dude. And he's like, oh my God. It was the guy that used to work, uh, wait on me uh, as an employee of Wurlitzer Music. And that was Fritz. That's a crazy thing. That's We knew each world. other in the mundane world. Uh -huh. And then we got to know each other in the pagan world. And then when we finally met in person, because we never shared pictures, because of course this is... Mm -hmm back when everything was DOS, right? Everything was text. Um, it was just one of those amazing coincidences, right? That is that an happened. amazing story. But <laughs> back to you, you told me that you were once a Jehovah Witness? Uh, yes. In my spiritual journey, I am. Um, I, most of the cults, most of the abusive religious systems will prey upon people that are vulnerable and that that's how they capture them and um let's see i was about 20 and it had been a very depressing time we had just lost a child mm -hmm. and we got involved with the jehovah's witnesses and um i was even baptized going door to door you went to door to door Oh yeah, I did oh. the door to door. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Now that's that a whole other lifetime ago, huh? Oh my gosh, it really was. It really was. Um, and as far as the Jehovah's Witnesses are concerned, I am. I said I was disassociated. They said disfellowship. You know, it's kind of like who's right, who's wrong. But um, I left. I laughed. I'm a heretic. Of course I had to leave. <laughs> <laughs> so when did you start your pagan path? Let me see. I have been with the Lord and the Lady. I have been on this wonderful path since about 2000, 1999, 2000. About 24 years. Wow. 24 years. Almost as long as me. What brought me to this path, what led me to this town, <laughs> um, I was, I've, I've always been a writer and I've written zines uh, since like 89. And I was working on the subject of women in church history, right? So I put it in Google search, women in church history. I just wanted to do tons of research and it, gave me the link. One of the top responses was a link to a book called The Dark Side of Christian History by Helen Ellerby. 
and the link gave the eighth chapter of the book, um, The End of Magic and Miracles, I believe it was called. And um, it told about what the church actually thought of women and what they would do to healers and midwives and so forth. And those were my kind of people, even as a Christian, I used the midwives and been practicing herbal therapies for almost 40 years. But anyway, this shook me to my core and I did more research and more or less studied myself out of the church. I think, I think a lot of pagans have this experience because we love books, we love to read, we love to research, we love to learn. I, I think many of us can say that we studied ourselves out of the indoctrinization. That's a, a, a really cool way of saying it. I studied myself out of church. I am going Seriously. to so adopt that. But yes, it's, it's all about education, isn't it? It's it, it's all out there too. It's not hidden. Right. What, what's hidden is the mind that can receive it and research it, and you know that that's where the trap is in the mind. But absolutely, get out of your own way. Believe in yourself, and anything is possible. Right, and in a large amount of healing, because I firmly believe that a lot of groups use mind control. And I kind of get into that a little bit in my book, A Heretic's Devotional, especially in the first part. Gotcha. Yeah. So what does your family think about, you know, your whole pagan path? Well, my mom, well, do pagans believe in God? And it's like, oh, do we? <laughs> yes, 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 we do. And goddesses plural yes um no my family my family i was raised catholic they know my heart they know my love and they see the life that i live so that has to be a testament to to our so all of, so all of these shining faces here in the photo on the screen that's your family yes my babies i have seven children Oh my and goodness. Okay. The, the man, the man in the black clear at the end was my husband, Marty, and he just crossed over last October. So oh, publicly hail the traveler. Hail the but, traveler. Um, absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. yes well, um, that's a good looking family there. Oh, thank you, my dear. Thank you. And a beautiful, beautiful sunset behind it. I I'm going to bring Ginger back on so we can have um, discussions as well. Okay. Welcome back, Ginger. Um, Thank you. So, Beth, tell us all about A Heretic's Devotional. Well, I wrote this book in 2019. And um, just let me read a little bit from the back cover. It's kind of like my teaser. Sure. I was raised Catholic sojourned with the Jehovah's Witnesses for over two years, danced with the Pentecostals for about another 10 after that. For four years, I attended public ritual and took many fascinating classes, resulting in clergy ordination with a Wiccan-inspired temple. This is how my story begins. Join me as I share the insight that I have gained, the love that I have shared, and the wisdom that has helped me to grow. So the first part, it, it's divided up into three sections. Uh, there's an introduction. And the first part is called the road to heresy. And that is basically about my spiritual journey and the what led to the next unfolding in my spiritual level evolution. And um, let me see if I have anything. I talk about mind control a bit in it because I believe that um, I believe that mind control, whether it's really obvious or even if it's more subtle, it is, is something that can keep you from being free, 
from being liberated and and, and rising in your own consciousness. So I, I do like to talk about that and how to be free. It's so simple. Uh, the second part is called damnable heresies and unsound doctrines. And um, they are more or less my thoughts about different things, um, religion, what is God, true self, death and reincarnation, just my thoughts. Um, the third part is called the heretics devotional. And they're just little essays and poems and prayers that I had written over the years. So, so beautiful. It, it's, it's from my heart. And, it's your um, path. Yeah. Yes. You're sharing your path with others. And, right. you know, I think that every single pagan has went through this. What do, what do you think, Ginger? Absolutely. I did. I was just, I was sitting here nodding because I'm, I'm hearing somebody else recount the steps on, on my own journey too. So that's, that's marvelous. Yes. Good I on was, you. Good I on was, you, Beth. Yeah. Thank you. I was now, a church I, organist um, in the Baptist church from the age of 14 to 18. And I was having spiritual experiences, but they weren't Christian, mm. you know? Yep. I was, you know, I, I didn't pay any attention to the screaming man at the pulpit. I enjoyed <laughs> the music and the peace and the, yeah. and the, and the, um, fellowship. Yes. Yes. I understand. Yeah. 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 Um, gosh, what was I going to say? Ah, the fairies took it away. <laughs> yeah. That happens to me all the time. So is this like your the, um, uh, publisher book photo that you were talking about? The black and yes. white one? Yes, that's my my author photo. <laughs> it's very nicely done. Thank you. I did I it myself. Your... Oh, you did? <laughs> yes. Well, that's nice. I love the angle and the lighting's perfect. And I also love your onk. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I, um, I was gifted that at a flea market uh, for breaking up a could be fight between a vendor and a fire marshal. And I was, I, I went in there breathing peace, Ginger. Okay, I did. <laughs> and he gifted me that onk. So that was pretty special. <laughs> That's nice. That's very cool. So do you want to read like one of your poems or something from your book and share? Um, Let's see, do you want to hear uh, about mind control, the recruiting process? Um, yeah, I think I'll read a little bit from the book. Okay, go ahead. Okay. The recruitment process that was used is predictable and effective. It goes as follows. When the group slash recruiter first meets with the prospective convert, the love, concern, and graciousness is very much unconditional. They truly meet you where you are. Don and Kay, those are names that I chose for the couple that came into our life um, as Jehovah's Witnesses. When they came into our lives, when our souls were very raw and vulnerable, their attention made us feel special. We felt that to this couple, and now, to this God that had a name, Jehovah, we truly mattered. After the convert has settled in, made some friends, and is truly beginning to feel like they are part of something, it becomes obvious to the convert through their studies that this group has a unique claim on truth. Jehovah's Witnesses do this by lumping all of Christendom into one entity. Babylon the Great and her daughters. Not only has this organization been effective in establishing their authority, they would also demand commitment from their convert. Truth is the truth, and everything that is not the truth is the lie. If Jehovah's Witnesses are Jehovah's only righteous organization, are other troops groups the truth or a lie? 
The convert at this point has already made the group a significant part of their life to the point of distancing themselves from family and old friends. They actively seek the company of others who affirm their newfound faith. They have made a clear distinction between their group and other groups, us versus them, and are taught to fear and avoid anyone or anything that questions or criticizes their organization. So there's certain distinct steps to how the recruitment process works. And yes. And, and I'm going to add that um, you're reading, you know, specifically about your experience with Jehovah Witness, but that can apply to any religion, any including religion. Wiccan pagan, including, okay. It, it's truly a fundamental thing that happens depending on who's leading that congregation, right? If they have a huge ego and they are more right. about them, it becomes more cult-like, no matter what the religion. So it, it's really all about, you know, understanding that true religion sets you free. It does not limit you, right? It does not this limit you. This is yeah. so true. Um, I was involved with the witch temple in Wichita in the early uh, 2000s, and which was an acronym, Wiccan Inspired Temple for Community Healing. And I taught their 101 course many times. Um, it was more like a survey course, like what you would take in college. It was not a how-to. But the first lesson that I would always teach was on finding a teacher. Mm -hmm. And we learned about something called power over. You know, you gotta watch out for people that wanna put their power over you. Exactly. Right. Exactly. I always right. tell my students to ask questions, not just to shut up and believe it, right? Right. Make right. up your own mind, do your own research. Teach right. me something new, how about that? Exactly, exactly. <laughs> Which in my life, I mean, being a music educator myself and also a high priest and leader of a coven and an educator in paganism and Wicca, there is no greater blessing than being the teacher because it's through teaching that you learn from others so much more faster. And the reason for that is because you have to come up with all sorts of ways of explaining your viewpoint and your belief system to somebody new. And because you're coming at it from different angles with different metaphors and different analogies, you're learning the subject material even on a deeper level than you would have if you had not taught it to another person. So I'll, um, if you really want to learn, teach. Yes, I agree especially by example, you know, and none of us are perfect, but, you know, we reach a point where we really need to live our truth, you know? Absolutely. Yeah. Everybody has their own path. Everybody has their own truth. Even in my own coven, we tell people we walk the path together, but we're not on the same path. You're just right. adjacent to me, right? Right. We're friends holding hands as we walk our own path forward. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, I just had a visual of that. I could just see you linking arms and walking. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, if people want to reach you, Beth, how do they get in touch? Um, I am on Facebook, Beth Sage, and you will probably... Uh, there's a picture of me with a guitar. That's my profile picture. And if um, you'd like a free PDF of the book, The Heretics Devotional, uh, just send me a message on Messenger. Um, but if you prefer to have a hard copy, I'm on Lulu. So just a Heretics Devotional paper book, paperback, Lulu. Very, very cool. Yes. And here is her address for her Facebook. It's facebook.com slash Beth dot S as in Sam dot Owens and the number one. Right. That's it. Um, so 
what are you donating for the arcane giveaway here at the end of the show? I am donating a copy of the book and I have it signed. I'm also a soap crafter. So I tucked in a couple of bars of soap to, to, to nourish your skin. That's so awesome. So what, yeah. what flavor, what I, I always say flavors of soap, like we're going to eat them, but what's, what, what, what scent do you, are you thinking? Well, that's up to you because I sent four with a note telling you to keep two. So Aww, <laughs> you didn't have to do that. You didn't have to do that, but thank you. Thank it's all you. Right. That's all right. Um, so I heard that you had a surprise at last year's Heartland Pagan Festival in Kansas, something miraculous and crazy happened. Yeah. Yes. It was pretty amazing. Um, I, went there alone and I've been learning how to do a lot of things alone, which is scary and wonderful and empowering. But um, I'm thinking, okay, I just got my little space and everything and all my friends come over for coffee and music and la-di-da. Well, my daughter pulls up, my youngest daughter pulls up and that was just amazing. And then a man that I had been dating for a couple of years, gunned it all the way from Florida, drove all the way to Florida, nonstop to Heartland. And I was talking to my girlfriend, Rebecca, up by the pavilion. And my back was to the pavilion. You know, there's the road. I think you know what I'm talking about. And I told her, he's on the land. I can feel it. He's on the land. And I turned around. And there he is coming up the road in his RV. It was just, it was immaculate. It was wonderful. We had so a great time. you felt him before he, you saw him. Yes, yes, That's I a did. connection. That's definitely was, a connection. It was beautiful. And this was just last year. And they had all of these gorgeous, gorgeous temples set up um, throughout the camp. And um, we went to the Oshun one. It was just beautiful and healing and amazing and wonderful. And then we went to the Buddhist temple. And as you go to the temples, they would give a little service in their tradition. And um, Charlie was very Eastern. He's a Taoist. So we went to the Buddhist one. Well, at the same time, the Satanists were having their uh, their ritual, like Kitty Corner and across the street. So this is so cute. The Buddhist would be practicing his, his chanting and every once in a while it was punctuated with about 25 people hollering, Hail Satan! <laughs> <laughs> and, now that's a mix right there. <laughs> that's a mix. Only at Heartland, right? Only that's at a, Heartland. It's a smash but, um, up. <laughs> yeah, Only at Heartland. Told, yeah. I, I told that little monk, I said, boy, this is one for your grandchildren. <laughs> um, if anybody's never been to Heartland, I highly recommend it. Um, we used to uh, travel up every year for years from Florida to uh, do our um, paganmusic.com uh, tent and sell our CDs and such you know, before the invention of the MP3. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's it's an incredible, incredible uh, gathering. Um, one of the biggest in the nation, kind of like Starwood, but Starwood's a little bigger. Um, but uh, yeah, wonderful, wonderful would, people back in Kansas. Hi, Aislinn. I would like to bring you up to speed a little bit. Last year was the last official heartland all right oh i didn't know yeah and they have regrouped under uh different leadership and they're calling it heartland magical spaces okay so, so a different be... group of people but is it in is it still at uh, gaia is it yes absolutely still at the same land okay absolutely. so same land different management slightly different name right um I, I'm hoping that, you know, numbers will pick up um, because I love going. I mean, I live like two and a half hours from camp. I go yeah. there several times a year. It's a beautiful, beautiful piece of land. Absolutely. It is. Yeah. It is. 
So um, you also were sharing that you had just finished an album. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, it's um, it's called Bouquet, and it has nine original songs. Um, I'm a folk singer, and my son Nolan is a death metal artist. So, of course, I'm on a death metal label. <laughs> you should see it. Sorted Curse Productions. And there's my bed, that innocent face. <laughs> <laughs> there's another yeah. mashup for you <laughs> i know that's just my life i'll tell you but um it was a lot of fun um doing it putting it together with my son and his friend drew and um yes i i love singing i i sing to lift people's energy um i'll, I'll never be as good as is ginger or you know maybe that may sound a little self-deprecating um i i sing just to lift people up and you know if all i do is sing in long-term cares and around a campfire I, i'm happy i'm good with it <laughs> well listen i as i tell my music students online never say never if if you apply yourself it will happen I have, as a vocal coach, I have taken people that sing completely off key. I mean, completely off key, like Lucille Ball, bad off key. Uh -huh. um, from the I Love Lucy show. Of course, she could sing a little better than that, but um, she played it up on the I Love Lucy show. But I've gotten them over, you know, it took three or four years of lessons, but I got them lead parts in musicals. So, oh my goodness. Anything's possible if you apply yourself. You know, you have to well, practice you. and you have to do your thing. And speak of which, there's one of my music students texting me. I didn't realize my phone was still unmuted. It was not muted. So I apologize <laughs> about that. Um, so uh, you also, one last thing, you had said that you just moved to Kansas and you are also looking at creating an adopt a highway program. Okay. Um, it, a little mixed up information and oh, okay. so understandable because i am living in the mixed up situation can you imagine what it's like in here sometimes um i live up by the nebraska border and that's where i am right now but i am working for my daughter and her husband they own a pizza place down by wichita so i spend a lot of time in wichita and come back up north a couple of weekends a month. Um, I've got gardens and I, I love my home. But I lived in the Wichita area before, back when I was with the Witch Temple. And we had a, a charter with the Adopt a Highway program. And I'm really hoping to get another one going. I mean, our sign back then said, Wichita Area Community Pagans. And it, it gave a testimony to us. It, it, you know, we're here. We care about the earth and we're picking up your trash on the highway. That's how much we care about the earth, you know? That's beautiful. Yes. I, I, I think that, um, I think that it brings people together. It really brings the community together when you can find something doable and beautiful and good that you can do together. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. So let's bring Draken back on. Uh, questions. Do we have any Q&A questions? Um, there's no questions in the chat. I mean, they've, we've kind of just been talking. There's lots of like, uh, you know, comments and uh, which is wonderful. I wanted to say though, that like Ginger, when you started telling your story, I was like, oh, we have the same story. It just flipped the religions. Like I, Protestant, Catholic, you know, and now honestly, in on my journey to Wiccan, like I'm in classes with Alexian. Um, after many years of us discussing different things, I was finally ready to. I he can tell you I've been anti-organized religion for a very long time, <laughs> and um, so. It's wonderful, though, to like see like that we do have a lot of the same story into the same path, you know, where our paths are going side by side. They're not like the same path. 
you know, it's, it's right. wonderful. So thank you. I, I, I actually hadn't got your book yet, but I'm going to go and get your book like right after we leave here. So <clears throat> oh, awesome. <laughs> I did the same thing with Morgana magic. Like I, um, as soon as our last show was over, I went and bought a whole bunch of stuff. It is gorgeous. You guys gorgeous. So Yes, Morgana Magic Spell does amazing, amazing graphics and really good information within there as well. Yeah. Okay. Well, before we get to the, I'm um, sorry. And it's Rev. I think it's it's R E V period, M A I L L E T, which I'm assuming is like Reverend Malay or something. So I apologize if I butchered it. Um, my dad in the '70s decided to Christian denomination serve. So I've been there and JW as well. So apparently you were JW. We have one of our viewers. My oh, yay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for clarifying. It's pr pronounced my yay. Um, so, yeah, um, we I think you're right. I think a lot of us have had that same experience and like basically either book read or Internet our way out. Yes, into the light. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, before we end the show, we're going to have a little bit of fun with the guests, and then we're going to do that drawing that you've been waiting for. So here we go. Ginger, Beth, this is where you grab your pieces of paper and pencil. I'm going to throw the clock up on the screen, and you have 20 seconds to jot down some ideas for these questions and then we'll see what your answers are after the time runs out. Here we go. Question one. Knowing what you know now, looking back on your life, what was the first magical moment or psychic experience that you had in your life? Knowing what you know now, looking back on your life, what was the first magical moment or psychic experience in your life? Question two, if you were an herb, which herb would you be and why? If you were an herb, which herb would you be and why? And finally, question three, if you could have dinner with anyone from history, who would it be and why? you could have dinner with anyone from history, who would it be and why? And time's up. <laughs> All right, I'm going to start with Beth because B comes before G. That's the only reason. Number one, Beth, knowing what you know now, looking back on your life, what was the first magical moment or psychic experience you had in your life? Um, as a small child, as I would lay in bed, I could feel my body and little baby soul uh, separate. It was just the most amazing feeling. So I'd say OBEs um, were something that happened to me as a child. Out-of-body experiences. Yes. Oh. Yes. OBE, out-of-body experiences. Ginger, what would be your answer? I wrote down elves in the forest. Uh, when when I was little, I would go. We had a, a side of an ash woodland behind where I grew up, and I'd go out there and I'd play. And there were little people that came out and played with me. And uh, I realized early on, mom and dad didn't like me talking about that. That that was just that was my imagination running wild, right? But uh, yeah, I know I had little little friends growing up, and and when I was really sick, they came into the bedroom and and would talk to me. So visitors. very cool, very very cool. That explains a lot. <laughs> <laughs> no, in a good way, in a good way. Your connection with nature and your connection with with the fae. Okay. Oh, yeah. yeah. Number two, Beth. If you were an herb, which herb would you be, and why? I wrote my name, Sage. Um, yeah, I came by it honest, and I love 
the herb sage. I work with it a lot. It's healing. It's good for so many things. It's culinary. It, it makes food taste good. Um, yeah, sage. Very cool. Ginger? Rosemary. Um, I, it's, it's, a, it's another beautiful healing herb and it makes things taste so good. Um, I, my, my mom used to do uh, rosemary and garlic on, on salmon and that was one of my favorites. But rosemary is also an herb that helps us to uh, um, become more alert. When I worked for the Transit Authority in Austin, Texas, I introduced them to the, the alertness that, that rosemary can bring and, and it actually uh, increased their safety numbers really, really well. So I figured, you know, rosemary uh, keeps us alert and for gosh sake, paganism needs more alerts, right? Yes. <laughs> very good, very good. Number three, if you could have dinner with anyone from history, who would it be and why, Beth? Okay, here I'm gonna reveal my true dork. I don't try to hide it too much, but I put Ben Franklin. Um, he was one of the greatest polymaths on earth. He was an amazing human being, a writer. His father was a soap maker, so I have a sneaking suspicion he knew how to make soap too. And um, I, I just think that I would love to have picked his brain, you know? That would be definitely a cool conversation. Absolutely. All right, Ginger, if you could have dinner with anyone from history, who would it be and why? Actually, I, I, I sort of split on this. I'd love to talk with Tesla. I'd love to have dinner with Tesla. But on the other hand, I'd also like to have dinner with George Washington because I'd like to talk to him about his little 10-year-old uh, surveyor, Zachariah Bradfield, who was like my my great, 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 great grandfather. <laughs> I'd like to trade recipes too. Wow. <laughs> Wow. Well, I'm with you on Tesla. I would love to have talked to Tesla. Oh, I love Tesla. Just absolutely fascinating, fascinating man. Yes. Not the company, the man. The man. <laughs> the man, the original. Nikola. The original. Yes. Nikola. Yeah. Nikola Tesla. All right. So that was fun. Um, so now, if you remember at the very, very beginning of the show, I said that one of our guests was a sharpshooter for the Army ROTC. And uh, we're going to reveal who that is by them um, raising their hand in a second, in a second. But first, we're going to ask the people that are viewing. I want you to type one if you think it's Ginger. Or type two in chat if you think it was Beth. That was an Army ROTC shooter sharpshooter and from what i understand was like smoking all the men smoking all the men what are we getting what are we getting mostly here oh uh, we got a two number okay. two so most people think it's beth so will the real sharpshooter raise their hand It's Ginger. Tell us all about this story. <laughs> Tell us. Tell us about it. Uh, I was at uh, Spring Hill College in Mobile, Alabama, and uh, it was a very, very, very strange time. Uh, talking about uh, religious background, I, I actually survived 14 years of Catholic education. Um, so I was at this very strange Jesuit college and cutting classes and got pulled into, I, I got pulled into the little bunker where they were doing a rifle practice. The little Lieutenant called me in because uh, he wanted to show up all the guys who were goofing off and um, put a, put a rifle in my hand, loaded the, the bullet in it and uh, told me what to do. And, uh, Sat there and I did uh, perfect shot group, prone, kneeling and standing. And um, so put all the guys to shame and I eventually became uh, uh, captain of the rifle team. 
uh, and the first woman officially to join the Third Army ROTC. There's a newspaper article on that. Um, but the epilogue comes when, uh, because I had cut classes so much, I didn't go back to college, and uh, I ended up joining the Navy after a summer uh, at home. And while I was in Navy boot camp, I got this big package that was a commendation and a medal from the uh, Third Army for my my performance in the rifle range. Isn't that amazing? So this sweet lady who plays the harp and the flutes, she can take your lights out. So don't mess with her. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Okay, it's finally time for the Arcane Treasures giveaway drawing. All right, the way this works is today's secret word is hashtag pagan. All you have to do to enter the drawing for all of these free goodies, the book from Beth, the soap from Beth, two download codes for two different albums from Ginger, a $25 coupon for PaganMusic.com and a free PDF uh, book of Beltane. All you have to do is in YouTube chat, type the word hashtag Pagan. And so what we're going to do here is I am going to bring up the clock again, if I remember how to do it. And... <laughs> In one minute, we will make the draw. So you got one minute to enter hashtag pay again. This is exciting. Who is going to win? <laughs> Who's going to win the drawing? We've got two entries. There are five people watching. Put your, put your uh, roll in there, guys. Just go to YouTube underneath the video on the chat. All you got to do is type pound sign pagan and hit enter. And you are entered into the drawing. You've got 15 seconds. I love this. In three, two, one, time's up. All right, let me share the screen for the draw because I can actually do that. Here is the screen for the draw. And boom, and boom. Here we go, good luck. And the winner is Sandra Wallace. Congratulations to Sandy. <laughs> Congratulations. You get all of the stuff. That was cool. That you was get cool. All of the things. You get all of the things. All of the things. Okay. So, congrats to Sandy in our second Arcane Treasures giveaway. Please email me directly at lordalexian at gmail.com to claim your treasures. And I want to express a heartfelt thank you to both my guests, my sponsors, and Draken. Thank you so much for joining us and making this show special. Draken and I will be back next month along with new guests, including the pagan recording artist, Lou Balashika, as well as Psycho, Deborah Laurie. Have a wonderful, fabulous day. We'll see you next time. Boss blessings. Bye, guys. Bye. Blessed be. Bye. Blessed be. Blessed be.